Hey everyone, welcome to Reading the Green and our Golf DFS show. My name is Mike. I got Kyle tonight. Kyle, how are you? Good. I mean, just me, which so sorry to everyone out there. You don't get Jordan's expert analysis. But as you can see, and if you're watching this on YouTube, also a little busy, might be scooping a little bit between takes because apparently we're getting like 38 inches of snow tonight or over the next well, few days, Mike. That's uh well, we'll talk about that in a second. I think, uh, first of all, I like I like when we get a one on one chance. I it's fun when I get to go one on one with Jordan because we get to talk about dumb stuff like swag golf. Not dumb, it's cool, but dumb stuff when it comes to DFS. But with you, Hugh here, I can geek out a little bit about golf and stats and all that. So um, I hope our listeners enjoy the show because this will be very fun. It's also fun because we're halfway ish through full swing, and so we get to spend a little time talking about that. Uh, but otherwise, yes, you're right. February 21st, a Tuesday, we were supposed to get about 38 inches of snow over the next 48 hours, which it just kills me. It's just I, you started to see grass this this last week, and now we're just going backwards. Yeah, and for you, those of you not from Minnesota, we're only being slightly sarcastic with 38 inches. I mean, it, it's it's a ton. You know, the last time I remember a huge, huge snowstorm in Minneapolis, the Metrodome collapsed. So. Oh, I we'll thought you were going to say like two weeks ago. Se- yeah, that was only 17 <laughs> inches of snow. So let's let's see what happens in the next yeah. two days. Just it, tune in. Something's going to happen. As long as it doesn't, as long as it doesn't get in way of my uh, PGA National Simulator tee time on Wednesday night, I'm good. Yeah, let's see. I, you got to report back how many water balls you had. Little tees. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, in this episode, we're going to have our Genesis recap. We'll talk about the Honda Classic. Uh, and like we said, we're going to spend the majority of our, our A topic time on full swing, which I know I know everybody else has. And Kyle, actually, I thought it was kind of fun. We both have kind of ignored the reviews on Twitter or re- ignored the review episodes. I haven't listened to any pods that have done, you know, Golf Digest has a whole bunch out. Um, so we get to have our fresh takes that are not spoiled by the industry. And maybe we're repeating some stuff, but it's fun for us to, to get to chat about it. I agree. Completely avoided anything. I wanted it to be fresh and uh, unbiased on, on what I thought. All right. Well, um, we're going to do it this way. We both have we both have some some takes. Uh we're both you're six episodes in out of eight. I'm five episodes in. So for those that have seen all of it. We're going to stop uh, kind of with our thoughts after episode five, uh, which is the the Fitzpatrick DJ episode. So um, let's start with this, Kyle, before we get into general general uh, review. There are I got eight guys on a list here and you just tell me, you know, better or worse. What is your impression now after seeing that player highlighted for, you know, 45 minutes? So let's start with uh, JT, better or worse. Am I going as a person or as a golf? I think just you, it doesn't really matter. You just tell me whether or not you, are you going to cheer for this guy more based on what you saw in the show? JT, it's hard to have a lean. I'm just going to go neutral. Like Okay. I, uh, I was high on JT. I saw it. I think I'm a little lower. All right. How about Spieth? Uh, I'll slightly improve, I guess, and not as much of what he particularly did. It's just how some of the other people on the show talk about him. But in general, I thought the JT and Spieth episode was really boring. By the way, but yeah, well, we can get to we can get to some of the flaws with the yeah. show. We can get to some of the things we like with the show. But okay, so Spieth, I same thing. I'm like, ah, kind of kind of neutral. Like there wasn't much there. How about Brooks? That's a that's a tougher one. I'm actually going to say slightly positive. Okay. And I've never been a Brooks person, so that's maybe there is a little bit of yeah. But we'll go on. Okay. I'm sure we'll go into more. But All right. that's the rapid fire answer. Slightly positive. All right, Scheffler. Negative. Nothing. All right, yeah. <laughs> Poulter. Negative. Negative. All right, Damon. No, positive. <laughs> that's what everyone would say. That's what everyone would say. Yeah. Uh, DJ? 
it is what it is, right? Like I don't I don't think there was a DJ came off exactly as I expected DJ to come off. So I guess he was a little uh, bit more straightforward than some others. So I'll go I'll give him a slight positive from that. <laughs> okay, good point. Uh how it fits. I guess I'll go a little positive. Yeah, I don't know. I uh I was pretty sure he didn't have any friends, uh, and I think seeing him up close kind of confirmed that. Well, now um, he lost his friend, so. Yeah. Uh, how about uh, how about Dan Rappaport? Negative. <laughs> okay. Sorry, Dan. Yeah. Well, Dan takes a lot of heat on. I want. I need to. I need to stay on the soapbox for a second. Dan takes a lot of heat on Twitter for just being an idiot. Um, and he should like he is uh he is a golf journalist personality on Twitter like that's what Twitter is going to do, um, but he goes from one end of the spectrum being you know Sports Illustrated Golf Digest to Barstool, and so of course like he's going to take flack, and here's here's the the biggest problem that I learned from the show about Dan. I could have sworn that he was at least a walk on golfer at Northwestern on the team for like five minutes when Fitzpatrick was there for like half of a season. I could have sworn he was a walk-on player. And what he says in the show was that he's a, he was a golf sicko that saw Fitzpatrick in the dining hall and sat down next to him and said, I know who you are. Do you want to be friends, essentially? <laughs> and now like... So he's a stalker. <laughs> He's essentially, he would say that he's Fitzpatrick's best friend, which, you know, if you see the episode, he greets him at the door when he like comes over during the PGA championship. And he's just like, he almost look, Fitzpatrick seemed like annoyed that he was over. But I was like, dude, you're a freaking stalker and you admitted it. When he greeted him at the door, I, before they had led into the friends part, I thought Dan was there to interview him, but then he <laughs> says he has to finish the story real quick i'm like is that journalism advocate big j journalist right right yeah i it's so 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 you one more point so back last year during the pga championship dan took a lot of heat on twitter for celebrating zalatoris's missed putt and he's seen like in the background uh with uh alex fitzpatrick and their mom and, and, and the fitzpatrick mom celebrating when zalatoris missed and twitter's like you know, Dan, like be a journalist. You can't be there celebrating the loss of a player just because this guy's your friend. And, you know, he's a bit like, hey, this guy's like one of my best friends. Like, what do you want me to do? Whatever. Like, and, and I got the impression that he had been working his ass off as a journalist all day for for Golf Digest and showed up on the 18th hole for the, the celebration. Watch the episode. He's just hanging out with the Fitzpatrick's like all day, pretty much all weekend. He wasn't doing a second of work for Golf Digest. He was just there to like hang out with his buddy. And so I don't know. I, this guy went to zero for me. I, I guess to defend him a little bit, if you can swing it, right? If you're getting paid to do that for your job, more power to you. I know. I know. Whatever. I, <laughs> I just was like, those are the things that I was looking for in the episode. And I like, couldn't quite explain this to my wife, who's been a very loyal watcher on this, and she's really interested. But these are the dynamics that are like next level. I think this is a good parlay, though, into my overall thoughts of the series. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I'm a little disappointed. Like, obviously, what we do and how much we watch golf and talk about it is great. I'll take more golf content, more access to these guys, however you can get it. But I didn't. Did you watch the Formula One Netflix? I did. No, me either. Me either. So maybe this is how that one was formatted too. But I don't. The story, how they set it up, having a journalist do the storytelling, uh, essentially with just bits of you know narrative and one on ones and these you know side stories from the different players. I. I feel like it it could just be more. I expected more, I guess, and like how it was all being built up from a, a standpoint, like more in the locker room, the interaction. I mm -hmm. think it's in the fifth episode with you know Rory and Rom yeah, sitting yeah. at a table. I expected more like that, but then also like more from a heated competitive environment standpoint. Was not that not like, super staged, by the way? Like there's nobody else in the dining room, and it's Rory, yeah. Morikawa, and and Rom just sit down and, like have a chat, like. Come 
Yeah. And, and like, well, Damon just, like, walks by. Exactly. And there's been a... I feel like there's been too many of those. I thought they would have just had more natural in the moment type footage, which yeah. I mean, outside of Polter, Polter throwing his gloves, club, yeah. like, yeah. but I mean, and I'm not saying necessarily from an outburst standpoint, but there has to be times where like, these guys are all professionals, athletes, and very competitive for the most part, except for maybe Joel, but uh, where they, you know, maybe sniff at each other or say something or like, yeah, they're not all that professional all the time come on yeah what do you think about the i mean we got we can go all over the place here um i i have first of all what do you think about the journalists that they've selected so far and i we haven't seen the second half but like that they selected to do most of the commentary i mean it's dylan death and and Amanda, and it's like brandel chambly was on for like five seconds and it's like i thought you'd get more i thought you'd get more of the brandles and less of the Dylans, but that yeah. was interesting too. Yeah, and I was gonna say that too. Maybe there's a strategic element to it though of the younger Netflixy generation, and they're trying to, you know, build off the success of the F1, which was huge yeah. with the twenty and thirty year old markets. And so take, you know, maybe journalists that would more appeal to those folks as the up and covers to... essentially well did you yeah. did you notice in the scenes in the uh again things that i'd like say to my wife during the show that she's like what are you talking about anytime a player is in the car and they're sort of playing audio uh about what the context of the tournament it's podcast audio it's no laying up it's gaming those are the two that have come up a couple of times you can hear it's it's solly and it's gaming talking from a podcast episode, as if the player's listening to it in the car, which they're really not. But I think it's interesting that they're using that footage versus NBC broadcast footage. I noticed Solly one time. I didn't notice Gaiman. Yeah, he's had a couple. He's had a couple appearances. I think in the Fitz episode, uh, he had him, like during the Fitz driving scenes, they had him playing. So you go back and listen to it. But so maybe to your point, they're taking some of the alternative media personalities to kind of feed to maybe a younger audience. No, I, that's a good point, too. Like, I'm surprised one of the no laying up guys hasn't been a part of it more. Yeah, they feel but like they've taken a big step this past year, and so maybe they missed the boat a little bit, but... Give us we'll some see. mayo on there. Let's liven it up a little bit. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm saying. So, okay, let me ask you another question, because I, I don't know. I don't know what to think on this. Think about the Brooks episode. Think about like some mm-hmm. of the stuff that he was saying. Half the time it sounded rehearsed. It, but again, like he's saying stuff that he did not make him look good by any means. Um, what is in it for the players like him to do this? So I, that's probably the episode I have the most thoughts on, and I don't know if I've necessarily fully land. I want to go watch it back, right? Like. At first, that my first takeaway, I was like, oh, I mean, I get the Brooks live thing. Like, he, his body is broken. I feel like he could do this anymore, and this is his way to go get money. And he kind of came off as genuine at first. But then I thought about it more, and as the episode kept going on, I'm like, or is this all a big play to set him and Jenna up for a future reality tv episode <laughs> that's what it, it did feel like that half the time yeah yeah and some of the stuff they were doing insane and i don't know their how it, it was just it felt as part of it is like am i watching mtv or mm-hmm. or you know something on the pga tour so i i ended the episode being like i still am not sure i honestly think there's a vein of truth to some of the things he was saying at least on just questioning whether he could do it anymore but at the same time i I feel like some of it was for show. So, do, and then now you, it's floated that maybe he wants back. I, yeah. Yeah. Do, do you think that um, the players had to sign off on the content at all or the final product? Because, like, I, I'm not saying Brooke, Brooks was, like, dragged through the mud, but, like, it didn't come off. Like, it didn't make him look better. I didn't understand the situation better. I thought he seemed, I just thought he seemed dumber. Um, I I don't know. I I think, expi- like I guess going back to the JT Spieth one, there had to be more that those guys talk about flying on a PJ yeah. drinking, 
Yeah, Bell's too hearted, by the way. Yeah, I don't know. I, know. Speed <laughs> I, I did know that uh, one of them had an over on and one of them had a two hearted. <laughs> yeah, Speed had a two hearted, uh, JT had an over on. Um, then, like, okay, the stupid card thing for a little bit. So mm-hmm. it, it was either, I don't know if it was editorial oversight or at least the, the ability to draw lines. But that's what I like having the Brooks episode as the second episode. That seemed more a little bit more invasive. What you expected raw. the show to be like. Yeah. 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 But it's so at first I was like, oh, that was a much better episode. But then I'm like, well, was that real? I, I don't I couldn't tell. Yeah. All right. You got to You got kind of you have one more one or two more points. Do you want to you want to get out? The two funniest parts of it so far to me was I forget who said it, but when they called uh Ian Poulter's outfit a walking gender reveal. <laughs> that made me laugh. <laughs> yeah. And and then secondly in episode five, there's just back to back shots without any narrative of Brooks throwing in a huge dip and then Matt Fitzpatrick <laughs> putting on sunscreen. That made me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> um I thought that's where you're going with that. That is that that juxtaposition is really funny. Um in that episode with Fitzpatrick um, and I'm pretty sure it was Sunday, the ninth hole, or uh, uh, maybe it was, maybe it was Saturday, the 18th. Hole, I can't remember which hole it was. He's hitting like a four iron into the green from way out. So you big rip with a four iron. And I had to play this back. 100% they just threw driver contact audio over the shot because oh. it sounds like, <laughs> it just sounds like titanium hitting a golf ball. And I'm like, hang on a second. Like, that was not an iron out of the rough. <laughs> there, so there some of the production one. choices are are really, because there's like, there's like such intense music playing the whole time through the show. And you just like, I don't know. I, it's it's just, the production is strange. And I'm sure if you watched F1, like you said, it probably would feel similar, but I didn't, I didn't watch it. Yeah. And that's the thing we, I guess we probably should keep in mind. The show isn't made for us. It's, 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 mm-hmm. it's made for People like us who tune in, enjoy, and watch five episodes in a week, which we have. But it's also tailored to try to get more people into golf, especially, you know, some of the definitions they go into. And how many times have they said, right. if you don't make the cut, you don't get paid, right? Every episode. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I, that said, all right. I'm going to watch them all. I've heard great things about uh Episode eight. Shout out to Derek in uh, the Rory one. He's already there, so I've I'm, I'm excited. Yeah, it, for sure. Like you can't be a golf fan and like not watch it. It's just I haven't learned a bunch, but it is certainly entertaining, uh, and I I look for it. I hope hopefully this leads to just more content because it, it is fun. Um, I do think it's interesting, like just seeing hearing these guys a little more. I don't know if we'll get guys like. I don't know if Homa's going to show up more. I know he's in the the Joel Damon episode a little bit, um, but he's he's so present on a lot of the podcasts that I feel like I already do know mm-hmm. him, his personality a little bit, and so maybe maybe we don't need that as much. Yeah, and actually that was something else I was I didn't write down, but I was going to say too. I, it's been interesting to me who has been highlighted and almost uh, more interesting who hasn't. I mean, I don't know who episode seven is about, but. Oh, actually, I do. I they heard Scheffler. Oh, uh, they show Mito and Sahith Sigala a little bit. Oh, okay. That be yeah, that's right. Because Sahith was uh, he was in like the preview, the trailer a little bit. So they must have content on him. The um, you know, I'll, last point I'll say is Scheffler made a point at somewhere I heard. I think he was on a pod that I was listening to um, that he said he just didn't give a lot to the camera crew. And so I don't know if it was, they, you know, Netflix had 7,000 hours of content. So they might have just got to post-production where, like, Scotty didn't give us a lot. So it's not that we didn't want to f- highlight him. It's just he didn't give us the same content the others did. So, Well, exactly. And that's where I was going with it. It's like, do you have that many hours? And, you know, Xavier mm-hmm. <laughs> X isn't on there. Cantley's not on there. Uh Scheffler is barely, yeah, but, I mean, he's a little bit, but those like, guys, it's just, there's so those no guys way. Is the, hell. Yeah, essentially. Yeah, 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 exactly. All right. Uh, well, that's good. I look forward to, I heard, look forward to doing a, a second half recap. Um, the only other thing, the only other announcement I'll make 
and you guys you guys weren't giving me anything back today. That's okay. We'll get you there. D, uh, DraftKings is going to do PGA Rainmakers. And so for those uh, Web3 NFT bros out there, uh, I think it's I think it's going to be really fun uh, for for fantasy purposes. I I hear that you can clean up uh, you can clean up on the DFS side, so I'm hopeful. Uh, good luck. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got nothing. Uh, you know what? I've also when Jordan Wiley when Jordan is back. Of- I heard Wiley had a lot of money in an NFL one, and he he did win, but like the last week, and that was about it. Yeah. Okay, all right. Well, when Jordan's back, we'll talk about it. Uh, all right, let's. What uh, you just polished off a beer? What were you drinking? Demo tape. It's a hazy IPA from Insight and Fair State as a collab. Oh, is that it's one of those it's your, your, uh... 303 blends? Oh, and you can't see oh. it because of my snowstorm. Oh, yeah. There we um. Go. That was in the liquor stores. Maybe I did yeah, see that I found actually. It last and, I, week. and my uh, oh, because it's an insight. Insight did the the canning probably, uh, and I probably didn't look in the insight section. Yeah, I just thought I, you know, you have your your normal path walking in, and it's uh, stood out as like, hey, that's a new looking can. So I'll check it out. I might have to try that. I do appreciate the YCH uh, experimental hops. Uh, I have a fair state as well. This is Strata. Uh, you know, one of the fair state annual releases that comes out, and you always got to grab a few, a few four packs because they're just solid IPAs. Oh, you got one too. Look at that. The backup yeah, here. Yeah. yeah, that's my uh, n- number two here. All right. Uh, let's do the Genesis. And I know we went pretty long on, uh, on full swing, so we can kind of cruise through this. My big question from the Genesis, and I have, I have no problem jumping on this bandwagon. Um, when did John Rahm become a villain, exactly? I think, well, there's multiple angles there. A, there isn't any left on the PGA Tour. And B, the general community, the, the echo chamber that we somewhat exist in when it comes to DFS and betting content, we don't like it when a guy goes off at yeah. 800 and wins. Like that's not good. No yeah, like, one, no, like every week. <laughs> yeah, no one, no one makes money at that. You know, eleven one is hard to get in your lineup. It's just, it's just not as fun. It's a lot more fun when Max Homa wins at twenty eight or whatever he was with the Farmers. Yeah. So I, I think it's a absence of one, but then also a little bit of an echo chamber for us on uh, who we hear that from. We're probably making it out of that's that is a really good point because it's funny because we're watching full swing. And my wife's like, oh, I wonder if John Rahm will be on this like you like him. Right. And I was like, well, I thought I did, but everyone else seems to hate him right now. So I guess I hate him. <laughs> you need someone to cheer against. But it's funny you say that. And actually, uh, Mayo and Feinberg talked about it on a little bit on their betting podcast this week, too. Same thing. There's like Feinberg loves Rahm, but. I was like, I found myself cheering against them, not just because I had a bet against them, just because yeah. I got to cheer against somebody. And, you know, you're not going to cheer against Homa. You, you know, maybe can't like, but can't like. It's so boring. Yeah. yeah. I mean, but win or lose, though, win or lose, Homa wins the, wins the crowd every time. And, like, his press conference afterwards was, you know, super raw. And the dude just is, he's so easy to cheer for. He's so easy to cheer for. He's so open. He's so authentic. Um, and then he goes out and he balls on the golf course. The only thing that didn't make sense was his debacle on 13, which he scraped together a bogey. But I, I he, he is a guy, like every week he tees it up, you you want to see him do great. First Especially knowing his story, right? Look at yeah. it, Look at his background, right? Like, yeah. And 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 the dude's been a killer. That's the first time he's ever finished second in PGA Tour. He's been in contention. He's won. Really? He's won six events, and that's uh, wow. That's really that's impressive. Um, and I guess the only other thing I'll say is Rory. Rory uh, uh is is on his way back, but oh my god, his putter. Like I only like lost a stroke putting last week, but. I was so painful to watch him play. And I know you and I both picked him in one and done. So I really had my eye on him the whole week. I played a bunch of them in DFS. God, was he terrible on the greens? 
Yep, same. Watch a lot. And it's back to back weeks. And that's the frustrating part. Like last week, he was big for me in DFS. This week, I went back there, DFS, took him one and done. And he's like, though, like, granted, he didn't miss a cut or anything, but he's the one stud. I mean, that didn't, didn't that didn't yeah. ball out either week. Every other stud yep. was there one of the two weeks. Yep. Well, um, you know, things haven't been great on the, the betting card or DFS wise, but that's why we have an event every week. So we just get to get back to it. Uh, Listener League, these guys did have a good week. G Bentley finishes in first. Andy Dingas in second. That's the second time, I think, in three weeks that he's finished in second. Uh, and Ness finishing in third. So congrats to those guys for actually having good lineups. Uh, you, Jordan, and I were in consecutive spots in the standings, just on the wrong end. I never... It's actually funny, right when we started talking about it, I'm like, man, I, I didn't place. So I knew that, but I didn't go look. So I'm like, hey, G Bentley, good uh, good dub for him. Uh, I don't know. I thought it might be his first. So great, good to see. Um, yeah, we don't need to talk about us, I guess. We, we didn't put it forth right. our best effort there. Overall, it was a decent week in cash, but any pivots, any um, veins I tried to chase to do something different in GPPs just did not pan out. No, and I'll say um, we've had a series of big landmines the last couple of weeks in our sweet spot that we'll say in our model, and so that's been hard to swallow. The big one for me this week was Taylor Moore, and I think we talked about this pre-pod a little bit. Like We don't often see a $7,200 player top the model. He was sitting near the bottom of the MPI. But we felt like that was it was hard to pass up that much consensus. And I was really excited to see him come in at 8% in the big the big GPP I was in. And so I thought, great, got a guy in my core, 8% owned, uh, didn't get trucked like at 15 or 16%. And the dude goes five over on his last seven holes to miss the cut. And he was like top 20 before that. Played 29 great holes of golf. And then I, did, I have no idea what happened. Yeah, I didn't see it either. Uh, to the point, you know, we since we recorded last week on Monday, I think we maybe could would have talked through this a little bit more if it was on Tuesday or Wednesday. But we had more, we had Rogers, we had Wyndham Clark at the top of the model, and you just know when there's three guys in the low sevens like that that a lot of people in the industry are talking about. There's going to be a landmine. There's going to be one you you got to stay away from. So you kind of got to really analyze those three close bigger spots. Fortunately this week, because of the more implosion in the last couple of holes, there was two of those uh, more than uh, Patrick Rogers was just awful. At least Wyndham Clark did get through the cut, but I guess that's something we, we often see when you have the, the value plays rising, you kind of maybe what the model does for you is makes you like, Hey, these are the guys you got to pay attention to. And then, signals hey deep dive dive a little deeper and formulate yep. your own thoughts for sure all right well uh that means we're on to the honda and the honda means we're back we're out of the we're out of the elevated events we going back to get real pga tour fields now guys you guys you've never heard of guys coming in from all over the world and then we put them on a golf course that has the ability to destroy anybody's week at any time. PGA National, everyone's familiar with it. Real water on 15 holes. Um, really, really focused on great ball striking, accuracy off the tee, maybe a little bit of length, but certainly accuracy with irons, and then the ability to get up and down, especially from the bunkers that are often pretty tight to the green here. So um I'm really curious, Kyle, what you think uh, about, you know, we can start with the top of the model, but I'm curious on just how you even like put a lineup together this week. Yeah, I I was kind of excited going in to get off the elevated events. And, uh, you know, sometimes some of the fields like this, we can find a little bit better value in our angle, uh, in our approach, because we can find some diamonds in the rough. But Looking at where we stand so far, that's, it's going to be a little difficult. Uh, one last tidbit on just uh, one last tidbit on, you know, something to look at. Uh, shout out to Joel Adon uh, from Tour Picks. He he did a little bit of a deeper dive and specifically off the tee. You can miss left on a lot of holes, but you cannot miss right. 
I think it was 10 of the, the holes, the water was in play off the tee. Uh, it was on the right. So if, if, if you're going to miss somewhere and uh, make sure you're missing to the left. And I think some of the, the modeling options out there, you can put that in as a, as a qualifier. But what we're seeing so far at the top of the model, I'll just throw the first one out, Mike, and then we can uh, workshop it a little bit from there. But I don't think this is going to surprise anyone. Some Jay uh, coming in so far at 10.7 on the salary, but 52% mention share and middle of the road MPI. Uh, he's won here, uh, but he also missed his last cut here. And that's the key. Uh, course history matters a little bit here, but all five past winners have also missed a cut at PGA National. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're, you're, you're two loose golf swings away from missing a cut on this golf course. Right? Like, the, the doubles and the triples are just there. And so we'll get into this. But no, like, there's no safety anywhere. So I'm, that's why I'm curious on how you strategize this week because even guys like Sung Jae, two bad swings and your, your week is done. Yeah, and so I think you get to a great point there. I, I think maybe you take one stand at the top of the board, one guy you have faith in, whether that's a 9K guy or a 10K guy, and then maybe go a little bit more of a, a balanced build, try to find guys that maybe are a little safer and can scramble, can get up and down on those bunkers, you said, try to keep the ball in play, avoid double. It's that double bogey mm -hmm. avoidance would be huge. But, I, I mean, I just don't see it to be a, a week for, like, you know, stars and scrubs, for example. And even though we've had yeah. a lot of people at the top of the board win recently, I'm not going to say, I mean, obviously, some Jay could do it, but... I'm for one. I'm not starting lineups with you know, some Jay Lowry and somebody else, you know, Alex Norn, and then going into the six case because you're really getting mm -hmm. desperate once you get down there. Mm -hmm. All right. So what's what's the other kind of give us the rest of the preview here is kind of above the 20, 20 to 5, 30 percent range. Yeah, uh, we have three guys coming in at 36 percent mentioned here Aaron Wise and Griffin and Jonathan Viegas. All right. Why is way strong, a lot stronger on the MPI relative to the others? Ben Griffin's not too bad either, but Johnny Johnny V's uh, pretty weak right now. It's only a seven. After that, we have three guys right at thirty percent: Adam Spenson, Hayden Buckley, and Matt Kuchar. Any of those catching your eye, Mike? Uh, well, I think Vegas and Spenson. I think those guys are going to be tough. Obviously, bottoming out on the power index this week, but getting a lot of love. I think there's going to be a lot of attention there. I kind of like saving six, seven hundred dollars and going up to Ben Griffin um, as a value play. Guy has played great this year. He let me down in one event. I can't remember which event he he struggled in, but um, he has had a really solid spring or winter season here. So I would look for a pivot there, even if only looking at the power index. Um, the other guy, though, I was just checking pretty quick. Uh, is Sepp Straka, is he even in our model so far? He's even got a mention. He's only 8,500 this week, defending champ. I think that's kind of interesting. Um, but here, let me uh, let me tell you what I was looking at. So Aaron Wise, I think we got to ride the green wave in our power index rankings. And so we've had a lot of, lot of above average play from players that chart above 80 on our power index scale and so with wise topping that i assume um and that will stick around most likely because he's getting love from gadula and spencer aguiar and um and uh lee hochberg like there he's getting love from the right guys and so i think that it's probably gonna stick around at the top of the month so i'll probably be looking at wise this week especially at 9200 that's such a good price for a dude that can strike the ball um i said griffin Here's one I don't I don't quite get. We're getting a lot of attention on Cam Davis so far, 70%, but 92 on the power index. Cam Davis finished last last week, uh, close to last at uh, at Riviera. Um, 8100. Cam certainly has a much higher ceiling than an $8,100 player in this field. The only thing I'd be concerned about is if this dude can't get in a play off the tee, he's going to be toast. He's missed three straight so, cuts I'm, after a nice run, but 
yeah, he's lost about 10 strokes in his last three events. It's not even close. Right. So I don't, I don't know Well, I'm interested to, to see how that, if that sort of levels off here as we get the rest of the contributors in, because I just, I don't see, uh, I don't see Cam, Cam sticking around the top of the model here. I'm glad you highlighted him and some of the key stats we've talked about. He ranks 136th in this field in scrambling, 122nd in this field in bogey avoidance. Uh, but he is very good at those 175 to 200 yard approach shots from the longer irons that you're going to need here. Uh, he's actually first in the field. So uh, there's definitely some shades of good there, uh, but to go with uh, quite a bit of bad. And one you talked about too is Adam Spence and Mike. I I did bet him um, in going into an event like this, tough course. Uh, he finished ninth last week off a tough course. You know I think that that's enough form to warrant a bet, but I don't think it's going to be somebody I'm going to have a lot of in DFS lineups. Uh, at the Phoenix Open, Farmers right before that he missed cuts at those, and a lot of his strokes gained last week were with the putter. So it's going to be tough for me to to go back there in a, a DFS, especially a cash lineup, maybe a little bit more from a, a GPP standpoint. Um, just, you're just hoping to capture the form he showed last week and then also when he won RSM last year. So like him as a bet, not as much as a, as a core DFS play. I'm with you on uh, Aaron Wise. Uh, I will say I think he's someone that uh, has tended to burn me in the past on the pod when I mention him. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I, uh, with a field like this, some of his history specifically around uh, windy tracks, and I think it's somewhere you got to go. I do like Ben Griffin as well. And then uh, we we mentioned that he's popping a little bit, but Matt Kuchar just hey there's there's some great form there and he does the things well we want to we want to see he's first in this field in sand saves uh he's good at avoiding bogeys he's good at scrambling he's got that old man game so i i'm intrigued uh and i think uh it's it's trying to find one of those safer plays in a very volatile event like this i'm i'm hoping matt butcher can uh provide that let me bring out, let me ask you about a guy on the, I, and I, this, this gets to a broader theme at this event, uh, but I'm going to use some of our data here to try to, um, to try to explain this. So Pat Mayo, one of the guys that we like to follow, he has been um, very good in our model over the last couple of years. Um, often one of the top touts that we track. Uh, and right now he is last five events. I and mean, we, we don't usually like to throw out when the touts are doing poorly. Like that's not why we're here. We're not here to, to trash guys. We like to call off the ones that are doing good. That's what you'll see on our Twitter feed. Uh, but over the last five events, the trend metric that we look for the, the, the expert performance, he is the second, he has the second worst trending uh, performance score of the, you know, few dozen touts that we follow. That happens, right? Get guys go through tough stretches. So one of the guys that Mayo he gets, uh, one, he has two content pieces that we follow. One of them it's two picks, um, based on strokes gain data and a whole bunch of other analysis. And one of the guys that he's on is Minwoo Lee. Now Minwoo Lee, uh, we see show up at random times. We see him play great. We see his sister play awesome all the time. Uh, but Minwoo Lee is ninety four hundred dollars in this field. So I was like, I was doing a double take. I was like, kind of a second, like Mayo is on Min Lee. What's going on here? So what, why, why do I have Min Lee at $9,400 in the Honda Classic when I have Cam Davis at $8,100? Other than the fact that Cam Davis has been terrible lately. But what, why, why is Min Lee ranked so, uh, uh, so, so expensive this week? He won the Australian Open, I think. Someone like the game Smith and stuff over there. I, I mean, that's I, I saw him highlighted as one of the people that uh, people or some of the experts were going to be intrigued by his opening number from a betting market standpoint. But he only came at twenty five or like to start. So I think he has like five straight international top fives. We get a lot of internationals in the field. A lot of guys that are playing really well wherever they've been playing, and they're showing up in Florida. And some of them are commanding pretty high salaries. I mean, Adrian Morocco was on here. He's had a great, um, 
a great uh, overseas season so far, and he's only at 8,300. So, like, Min Woo Lee, I guess we got to take a serious look at him at 9,400. TBH, I'm not going to have, like, any Min Woo Lee this week. I, I don't see that happening. But I was just trying to figure that out. It's tough to stomach at that price. Uh, I w- when you got Aaron Wise interest? at 90. 90- yeah, it just did. Yeah, it had my interest when, you know, people thought it was going to be a 50 to 1 bet and maybe 8K. But, ugh. All right. Well, let's let's uh, let's get things wrapped up here on the Honda. We'll do the tiers really quick and then uh, name game. Tiers this week. I, I we've talked about these guys quite a bit um, in, in tier three, but I think that's going to be a little bit of an interesting decision. If you want to stay away from wise or trying to get off. Uh, trying to get off of the chalk there. But obviously, from a MPI standpoint, we like Wise right now, but Vegas is right there from a share percentage standpoint. But then you also have Taylor Pendrith and Thomas Dietrich, which are two guys. They're both at 18% mention share right now, who I wouldn't be surprised if they rise a little bit from a mention share perspective here over the next 24 hours. And uh, who are people or two players that the industry in general seems to to like and play quite a bit. So I think that's something to keep an eye on. I, I'm i going to probably go wise at this point in time, but Pendrith and Dietrich might make my player pool in, in other ways, uh, if not in tears. Great take. All right. The name game. Last week, we had a game called Locker Buddies, and we picked uh, a handful of duos that would have shared had lockers next to each other had they gone to the same high school. And so uh, Jordan Jordan came up in the rear with uh, Grio and Griffin. Um, Kyle, you were next with Lowry and Lower. Uh, I was next as first loser with Lee Hodges and Tom Hoagie, and that left the listeners with Woods and Woodland. That's the duo at Riviera that won our name game for the week. And honestly, it was the 91 points from Tiger Woods for the week that I think did did me in. I felt pretty good about Hodges and Hoagie, but 91 DK points from Tiger Woods last week. Yeah, Justin Lohr, I mean, I got 82 out of Lowry. It just, he didn't make, Justin Lohr didn't make the cut. Yep. Tiger, Tiger? All right, Tiger. <laughs> all right, all right. I, I mean, see you. Yeah. we don't, we don't, um, we don't spend a lot of time, uh, you know, crushing on Tiger on this pod, and I think that's the way we like it. Um, however, round one, birdies those last three holes. Like, there are some spots that you would really like to be just to soak that in, and that is a quarter of the golf course that would have been pretty cool. There was several things. I mean, don't get me wrong that w- that would have been amazing to to see that witness that live but then he started out round two with some issues and it looked like there's a point in time in the middle of round there that he could be in trouble and then Mm -hmm. hung on to make the cut and then had a nice day on saturday yeah yeah i really did appreciate the bit on twitter with uh the look that he gave and i know there's i don't i do not want to get into the 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 prank and all that um plenty of conversations on that already, but the look where he just kind of laughed at JT and JT just like shook his head, like, come on, dude, like get out of here. Uh, (laughs) Very self-aware with what he was doing. And I thought that was pretty cool. Um, So Kyle, you picked up the name game slack this week because Jordan is, is out of town. Uh, I am very intrigued. Mike, did you know we have a set of twins in the field this week? I did not know that. We have Parker and Pearson Cootie. Uh, Those guys are twins, huh? Yeah, I didn't know that either. I was just going to go brothers, and I realized they're twins. And I'm like, ah, I got to step this up even more to to fit the twin team. But uh, you, you might know of uh, Pearson, right? He's He was a pretty good player out of Texas. Uh, expected to, to do some things on the PGA Tour someday. Well, his brother Parker, his twin brother Parker, Monday queued this week. So now wow. they are both in the field. Parker is uh, 6K and Pearson is 6,800 to combine for 12.8. Well, from there, it's twin week. So I attempted to uh, find two players in the field 
who I could match to some famous twins. So first off, we, we got Mark, Mary Kate Olson Hubbard, and Aaron Badley Ashley Olson. Okay. All right. <laughs> they come in 14K. We have Zach Johnson Johansson. Because uh, did you know? I didn't know this. Scarlett Johansson is a twin. Did you know this? I was just going to say, who, who is Hunter Johansson? That's Scar- Scarlett Johansson's twin. Um, <laughs> and for some reason, I wrote down Jason Bramlett as the other name. I don't know. <laughs> 14 jo- Joseph Bramlett. Okay. The. <laughs> Did you did you just look up famous twins, or yes. how did you even like? Okay, all right. Yes, I found a whole list. It turns out there's not very many famous <laughs> twins that I knew. So okay. All right. Lastly, we have Ben Crane, uh, part of the team Carter. So Beyonce and Jay Z have twins, Sir and okay. Romy Carter. But I couldn't make that work with names. So we had Ben Crane and and Eric Van Royen. Okay. All right. Well, I at least I feel educated now on some famous twins, which is great. Yeah. And they come in at 13 3. So right. Jordan is not here and got it last. So he's just going to get stuck with whatever's left because that's what happens when you don't show up mm-hmm. uh, to recording or playing golf and hanging out somewhere. It's warm. And when we're getting 30 inches of snow. So, mm-hmm. not sure. so yeah, my, I know which te- I know which team I'm giving him. Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing there's a bottom of the barrel here. Yeah. Well, so I th- do I get to pick? Because um, I was, the listeners don't get to pick first, and I was first loser. So, um, yeah. all right. I think the right team this week is Zach Johnson and Joseph Bramlett. I'm a little worried about Joseph Bramlett on this golf course driving all over the place, but. I feel like Zach, Zach can keep it out of trouble. So I would like team Johnson. They're also the most expensive team. I struggle. I'll let you pick and then I'll tell you why I, why I struggle to go a different direction. Go ahead. Hmm. Well, actually, let's let you take the pick for the listeners second. Oh, okay. I get to take the pick for the listener second. Uh, they're gonna get. I'm gonna. Re- I'm not gonna really try here because I think I got the winner. Um, they're gonna get Mark Hubbard and Aaron Badley. That's where I would have went. I like Aaron Badley this week if you're looking for a cheaper guy. Um, but Mark Hubbard is the guy that every time I play him, he sucks. So. <laughs> <laughs> um. The Cootie, the Cootie twins are pretty cheap. Um, so I guess I'll take uh, EVR. A uh, little hint, I do like him this week. And then Ben Crane, uh, he's also six. PVO, PVO. Uh, ben Crane, this is why I struggle with Ben Crane. And I know I've told the story on the pod before, but I was sitting on a, on a bus, like a private bus uh, at the 3M last year during a practice round. And I got in a... Ben Crane's caddy was on it. And I know I said that, like, he's just like, oh man, we're not even trying to make the cut this week. This is all PVO. And I was just like, my eyes were open to the idea that guys weren't even trying to make a cut. Remind me, what was PVO? Positive vibes only. Oh, yes, yes. The, and the other part of that story was the random cat, the random player trying to negotiate his. Uh, <laughs> Clothing deal. Yep. Did you, did oh, you yeah. ever figure out who, who that was? You haven't seen that I, on TV yet. And been I like, haven't. That's the guy. He, that guy, whoever he was, he he could have used some help on the wardrobe. He was just wearing like a he was wearing like a bad version of a Scotty Scheffler hat. I was just like, where did you get that hat, dude? Like, <laughs> you're a professional. Uh, all yeah. right. Final thoughts. Betting card. You've called out a couple of bets. Svensson. You said you got like guys like EVR badly. Like where, where are you? You got to be picking long shots this week, right? Uh, I mean, for the most part, ended up a little shorter than I initially wanted just because markets were moving around. But I took EVR at 80. Unfortunately, that was on DK and you can't cash in there because I could have got him at 110 today. Um mm. I did take Svensson uh, at 35, Ben Griffin at 55. 
I wasn't going to take Billy Ho, but he kept moving up the board and grabbed him at 35 and said, well, when I could equity at an event like this, why not? And then I did take Aaron Wise at 28. Uh, if I got him near 30, it was going to go there. So whatever. I This week, just give me a first round leader. I got a lot of those last year. Let's, uh, I think I'm doing a little bit. One of those guys, first round leader, let's go. Get a little better odds that way too, because you know, like Billy Hull, for example, he outright first round leader is fifty to one. All right, all right. Well, I look forward to seeing your one and done pick. I have one locked in, and I uh, am going to start waffling here in the next twenty four hours. And so, um, I look forward to seeing what you got. That's one thing we didn't hit on, Mike. Uh, I, we probably should shout out the leader at this point in time. Derek is up by one point three million um we talked about that that uh you and i last week uh stuck with rory and tumbled down the leaderboard a little bit but hey we're still top 15 at this point actually me you and jordan all are so uh we're, we're still there we just need to hit hit a couple of winners here at uh, an elevated event uh well speaking of we have that coming up so we're taking one week off and then we come right back to bay hill and so I look forward to uh, I look forward to kind of getting through this, getting a little bit of a breather, and then going back and watching the stars. So, of course, you can find our content every Wednesday on our YouTube channel or any of the major podcast platforms. We have a uh, a preview show every week, and then of course, good content throughout the week on our Twitter feed at RTG Podcast DFS. We have expert rankings, top plays, and just other random chatter. So, make sure you give us a follow. We look forward to talking about the Honda in a week and previewing Bay Hill. See you.